Hi, it's What If Wednesday time with Susan Bennett Fisher and Martin Fisher, the co-founders of Body of Nine. But what if you understood the difference between your natural number and your life experiences and your personality? So your natural number is your nature. It's what you were born with. It's the skills, strengths, abilities, energy signature, movements, physical movements, shape of your body. That's the level of the nature. And then it also provides you with a good hint, hint and some superpowers that go with your purpose. And what we want to talk about today is how does your personality sit on top of your purpose, your nature? And what sort of things can you tell from yourself and from other people when they start talking and actually doing their purpose, whatever their purpose is, whether it's their natural purpose or their perceived purpose? Yes. So your natural number, your natural way of being informs your movement. So if you want to start to understand your own movement, pay attention. Does your body like to lift and rotate around the chest? What's your natural number? We've told you your natural numbers movement center. So you know that. So start to pay attention to where you gesture, how you move, where you balance. What do uh, you expect from other people? Right. So each natural number has a, has a, a set of specific micro movements that actually support their body. So that's one way to really connect into your own natural number and to recognize the physical manifestation that is natural to you. Go ahead. Yeah. So one of the ways that I can describe this effect is that when I'm normally dancing, I dance up and down like a puppet. I'm happy just to be on my own in the dance floor, surrounded by thousands of people. And my way of being inside the dance floor is to move up and down and enjoy my experience of being on my own, listening and working with the music. However, when I activate my natural number four, which I've started to do, while it sort of makes my hips move more float, more fluidly, and I know about it the next morning for sure, I also want people to be looking at me. And the difference between dancing completely alone and wanting to connect with people on the dance floor when I activate my natural number four is so profound. The first time it happened, it really, really surprised me. Now I expect it. But when you're on the dance floor, when you expect you're... the change, you expect the yeah, percep yeah, perception change. Yes, and I expect to be in a place of why isn't everyone looking at me? Why aren't I connecting with everyone on the floor? If you consciously activate four. If I actually right. consciously activate four. Or if I'm driving down the road in my natural number fiveness, and all of a sudden I, you know, if I decide to activate natural number two, I find that I'm actually looking at the person next to me when I'm driving. And again, the way that I behave, my expectations are different depending on what natural number is active in my body. So that's one way you can also understand your own gifts that come with your natural numbers to learn about the others. So when you learn to activate the others, you activate your, per, your perceptive abilities, your, your senses, and they function in different ways when a different natural number is active, which then teaches you about what your natural way is. And actually is one of the things that we're just thinking about now is that it actually helps you understand what your requirements are. And I think it's one of the things we don't talk about very much is what are the requirements that you have for your natural number that nobody else has? Why don't people meet you? And some of that is because your requirements. What are do you not mean less. by requirements? Like if I'm driving, you I want mean to look at expectations or behaviors. Yes, all the above. It's like how is it that you expect the world to meet you? Because unfortunately, they won't. <laughs> Eight out of nine people are not going to meet you where you want to be met because they don't know how you want to be met. And similarly. You're not going to be meeting the people in your life where they'd like to be met. So this is a great opportunity to say, well, who am I? What is my nature? What have I been told that I should be expecting? And what is it that I really expect? Because I will pretty much guarantee they're going to be different. So one of the clues to what is your natural number versus what is everything else is the physical aspect mm -hmm. and the experience of learning the other natural numbers. Another thing you can learn from to tell is by really digging into and understanding your emotions. If you are, uh, we see that the different, different natural numbers actually get more triggered by shame, fear, or disappointment differently. So the head numbers tend to suffer from shame, shaming themselves, fear, experiencing other people as shaming them. And if I look back on my life, the major things that I remember in my life that were not pleasant, all I have to do with shame. So that gives you a clue about what underlies that. 
And that's one, this is one of the places that's, you know, really interesting to kind of experiment with because what happens is if we get triggered into shame, fear, or disappointment, that's a clue for you. So we want to dig to the next layer down. What is the belief system that's laying there that's causing me to trigger, uh, to, for that to trigger in my body? Because the, it's the belief system and the trigger are most likely part of your nurture not your nature, but there's still an underlying piece of your nature that is also informing you in that moment. And there is a complex interaction between the three. You may feel fear, you may feel disappointment, you may feel shame, but what, where do they all lead? There's a path of all three of those that's going to lead down to one of them being the, the root of the three. You may feel disappointed and then you may feel, well, actually, I feel more that I'm ashamed that I disappointed this person rather than that I am disappointed. So just because we're using these three words and you will feel all three doesn't mean that all three of them are core for you. If you can be honest with yourself, what is it that is the thing that makes you feel most uncomfortable? What is it that makes you feel least happy with your body? What is it that gives you this physical feeling? Because I don't feel physically, I don't feel anything physical when I feel disappointment. And when I feel fear, there's the normal fight or flight, but I don't feel that, that anxiety. anxiety, that almost nausea, that when I feel shame. It's a very, very profound, deeply physical thing that I feel. That's interesting because I think there's an element of nausea for each of the... So the one, five, and seven typically get that nausea when it's shame. Mm -hmm. Three, six, and nine get that nausea, that anxiety from fear. Yeah, yeah. And two, four, and eight from disappointment. It's, it's how does your body react to those three emotions? Play around with that. Now, how does that help them to differentiate between persona and personality, life experience, and their natural number? Well, I number? think we've been taught, and the example that comes up time and time and time and time again is that you need to look people in the eye when they're talking to you. And it's a sales technique. It's like you can't possibly respect someone unless you give them eye contact, etc. And that is... Just not accurate. Well, okay, that's not the question I just asked you. How do, how does a person use the understanding of how they feel about shame, fear, and disappointment to differentiate between their persona, life experience, and their natural number? Well, it, it's, what is the persona that has been put on top is the first question. They, they, because we don't know what our nurture is until we know what our nature is, it's really hard to decode that statement. Great. Okay, so what you're saying is, if I notice that my nature is to be disappointed and that to be the very most difficult one. If it's, if the, if it's my nature that I feel nauseous when I feel disappointment, yeah. then that's a profound indicator that you may be in the lower half of the body, two, four, and eight. Well, so that can teach you, that can give you a, a, a place in your body. But what what I heard you say there was that if something else is going on, that could be part of your nurture. Yes. Right? So if you know you're a 2, 4, and 8, and you know your Achilles heel is for, for, for your, nurture, your nature, your 2, 4, 8, is the disappointment piece. If something else is going on, that can be something that is a learned behavior that layers on top. So for you can either kind of go up the emotional chain or down the emotional chain. And by looking at, you know, what's the... the the emotional chain that I'm experiencing, it might be actually your nurture that triggers something in your nature. So paying attention to, so is that my belief or is that a belief that I was given as a result of my nature? So looking at the underlying belief can help you to see, oh yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, my weight is related to my value. For example, that is a belief system that's held by a lot of people. And that comes from our nurture, not from our nature. Our nature doesn't give one rat's ass about whether we're skinny or fat or thin or tall or any physical attribute. So, to to so, some extent. I mean, there is a point where your body's going to start saying to you, you know, I'm not feeling very healthy. It's not healthy, right? I don't it feel, feel good. Well. But the body's not going to say, I don't feel healthy. The body's going to say, I don't feel good. Right. And that's the, the healthy part is the judgment. The healthy part is the nurture. The not feeling good is your body talking to you. And there's no, there, there is no nurturing. No one's told you that you know, your body feeling good or bad is going to be whether you're healthy or not. Trust. If your body says, I don't feel good, 
then that's one thing. If you don't walk, do it again. Right, but if you walk past the mirror and say, oh, I don't oh look good. Oh, my God, my stomach is That's nurture. Out. That's nurture. If you look and say, I look X, or if somebody else looks next, so that's nurture, and that is a belief system, and honestly, that's judgment. It is. My eyes are watering today. I apologize. So the, and then that was nurture. Yeah. Because who the hell cares if my eyes are watering? <laughs> but we, we develop these responses from our nurture. And that is a really important thing to start to pay attention to. So you can actually choose what you want to hold as beliefs. Now, not easily. It's No one is saying that this is an easy practice. No. But it is a profoundly life-changing and happiness-inducing and wonderful step for the evolution of your life into a place of being able to firstly improve how you feel about yourself and secondly improve how everyone around you feels about you and them. Yeah, I mean, going back to the body, like this is what that we do learn from our two fours and eights, which is our body is actually a tremendous mechanism for understanding our nature. All of us have input from our bodies. There's one of the things that was made very clear to us, or I mean, but specifically, specifically many months ago, was that no matter your natural number, we're all aware of what's going on in our body. It's how much do we pay attention to it and how much does it actually drive our decision making that changes by natural number. Right. Not the awareness of it. Because I can be as aware of one part of my body if I focus on it as any natural number eight does naturally. So it's not a question of I don't have a body. It's a question of okay, how, am I paying attention? Am I paying to attention to my the body? Signals and the information right. my body is giving me, yeah. and by paying attention to how much you do pay attention, can also again help you understand the difference between your nature and your nurture. And now I'm feeling my body all over, and it's very different. <laughs> well, and gosh, you know, the number of times we override what our body says, even if we are a natural number eight, for example, mm -hmm. our body tells us information about our feelings, about what's going on around us, about safety, about health. And when we, oh, when we ignore those signals, the, they are natural signals. When we overlay belief systems on top of them and interpret those body signals, that's when we can get off base. And then when we override our body signals and there is the mental overriding, and then there's the chemical overriding. And while we are never, ever going to say, don't have fun, we're also going to say, be really careful. Our bodies are a source of truth. And if we do something to kill that information, then even a small glass of wine is going to change who you are. A teeny, teeny bit and a bigger glass of wine. So everything in moderation. And be aware. Well, actually, we don't really care what you do. No, we don't care. We're what you just do. pointing out that we, if you uh, if you alter the senses, the sensors in your body to any means, you're going to get a different read. It will affect you, and that's okay. But just be aware that it has an effect. And this is all about conscious choice. Yes. Make those choices consciously. You know, I I actually try now to consciously decide when I'm going to allow myself to overeat. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to allow myself to overeat, I do it consciously. I don't just Christmas. unconsciously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, or we went out for sushi last night, and it was so good. And we, I consciously said, I'm going to eat as much sushi as I want, because we don't have great sushi here at Bozeman. Yeah. So, you know, there are times to override your natural body. My body didn't feel that great. But I hadn't eaten so much sushi that I felt awful. No, we stopped. We, we stopped before we got absolutely completely. <laughs> Just, but it was a well, close one. Of sushi, no, but it, it was sushi. But it was good. So the and point, basically, we didn't eat for almost twenty-four hours. But that's a different story. Right, and 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 and, and you can do those kinds of things. But it's about consciousness. And it's about choice, and it's about understanding your nature versus your nurture. And understanding that even the smallest amount affects you. Right. One of the things that I learned very, very, very early on. In England, you can drink at 18. I went in and I played a video game. I had one half a beer, 10 ounces. I played the video game and lost about 10% in the points. And that happened again and again, enough to know that any, even just a half a beer, 10 ounces, was enough for me to lose the capability that I had when I wasn't, hadn't drank half a beer. Yep, and we, we don't identify if we've had a half a beer. Nope. 
uh, we won't we won't do it. I won't ride a motorbike. I won't fly a helicopter. I mostly won't fly an airplane. But back to the topic. Back to the topic. Yes. <laughs> but, so just be aware. Things affect you, yes. and just because you don't know they affect you doesn't mean they don't affect you. Now the other way that you can learn to tell the difference between your nature and your nurture is if you find a few people of your own natural number to hang out with, mm -hmm. and then look for the things that are common. You'll, you'll still have commonalities in your nurture to some extent or more in the responses to your nurture. What you'll find, though, is as you talk to people of your same natural number about what's natural number is part of your, na your nature versus what your, is your personality, that will get, it'll get clearer and clearer as to what's, where you have these deep commonalities. One of the fun ways to do this is to go and watch a panel of people. We were lucky enough to watch a panel of about nine people the other day, and there were three or four different natural numbers only split around the nine of them. And the consistency of the phrasing and the desires and the plans and the way that things were described and what they wanted to do between the natural numbers was astonishing. Each of the natural numbers of a particular natural number had very, very similar views and approaches to things. And if you watch a group of people, all of whom, you know, the TED Talk, for example, the, all of whom that have a particular similar subject and look how the similarities are by natural number of what people are talking about, you can start to understand that this commonality of approach, this commonality of experience of life is so solidly very profound, profound very and demonstrable. Natural. Yeah, it's very natural. Very natural. Yeah. Um, and it, it, in performance, in interactions with people, this is what bubbles up. It's what keeps coming up over and over again. If you watch your language, for me as a six, I talk about path, aliveness, and this is not conscious. I just find myself trying to describe other things in terms of my sixness. Mm -hmm. and, and that ultimately doesn't work for anybody but sixes. So I have to learn so where am I using language that makes sense to me but doesn't make sense to other people? Right. I could rephrase what I just said and I can say, well, when you get a group of people together, watch their pace. See how much they're expressing their emotions. See how it is that they talk about how we should be together in community. Because each of us approaches and talks about things so differently. So differently. So you have your natural way, you have the nature of the body, and then you have everything you've learned. So how many times in school were you told a particular thing? Uh, look at me when I'm talking to you. You know, the, the world out there doesn't support, go, you know, going back to the eye contact thing is a great example. Roughly half the world uses their eye contact to create a particular activation. The other half does not. And as a result, there's all sorts of myths that come to be based off which camp you're in. Look at me when you're, I'm talking to you. Uh, you can, I can't hear you unless you look me in the eye. Um, when, why are you staring at me? Because there's something wrong with you because you're staring at me like that. So there's misunderstanding. So notice where you're, where you have these misunderstandings and misalignments with your natural way of being. Are you naturally comfortable with eye contact or does it make you stop thinking and you can't answer, answer a question? So let's take this even further down into how you were raised. You were taught by amazing teachers mostly. Some were good, some were not. Who knows? Teachers are teachers. They're human too. But some teachers you understood, some teachers you resonated with, some you had a real trouble trying to understand. And then if you had to do exams, you had to answer the exams the way that the person that wrote the exams wanted you to answer. Which was really awful for me. I did terrible on yeah. exams so, in college. But the, the, the learning here is that once you have absorbed the wisdom from all these amazing people that are helping you get wisdom, it is your job not to parrot their wisdom. It is your job to take that wisdom Integrate and express it. it as you would. And that is when people like you can hear your natural number. And then once you understand that you have wisdom that you have percolated so that you can speak it using your natural number, then you can start thinking about, well, how can I percolate that wisdom so that other people of different natural numbers can hear it? Because if you are just parroting what somebody else has told you, it's not going to sound authentic. It doesn't resonate. It's not going to resonate. And, and people are not going to listen to you. No. And so... This is an interesting thing because it, it, is a, it is a function of integrating it into the way you speak, 
But then it's also about learning, you know, what's my nature and how does my nature want to talk about this? But how do I also integrate the understanding of the other eight so that I can communicate with people that aren't just my natural right. number? But first you have to make it yours. And once it's yours, then you can translate it outbound. Yes. Because if it just flows through you without that translation and without that integration to you, people are it not going to be sound, doesn't, doesn't it? No, it doesn't, it's doesn't not sound right for you. Right. Which yeah. means that every time that you've done an exam, you probably would do better if you were answering the exam in the way that the person of that natural number was marking the exam wanted to hear it. And it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real fallacy with the education system. That's a really good point. Because my daughter, who's a two, came home one day and one of her professors had completely made her her way of approaching a problem solving completely wrong. Mm -hmm. But there was nothing wrong with her uh, her way of approaching problem solving. It was just different than his. Yes. But he thought everybody should do it his way or they wouldn't make a good engineer. Yeah. And as a two, this was debilitating to her sense and of herself. And it would be to anybody because... Well, it was far worse because she is yes, a two. Yes, exactly. But, yeah. So it broke the relationship. Well, yes. Yes. Right. And also her sense of her relationship to herself, which is often for twos weighed in connection to their mm -hmm. other relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it was a real impact on mm. her for until she kind of broke it down and realized, oh, no, this isn't actually that I'm a bad, that I have a bad process. I just have a different process. Right. And so your nature underlies your nurture. Your nurture is what brings you to be where you are today. We are asking that you become aware more consciously of the separation between your nurture and your nature. And what was expected of you versus what is natural for you. And then what are the expectations that you have of the people around you and understand that they will find it hard to meet those expectations unless, you can, impossible. unless you can enunciate them, unless you can say what it is that you need because the expectation that people are like you is unfortunately not accurate. Because Only one out of nine, typically. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yep. So on that note, just don't judge others from your lens. Maintain curiosity, wonder and awe when dealing with others and start to look at the difference. What is their nature? What is their nurture? What is your nature? What is your nurture? It's, it, 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 it explains all the, the weirdnesses, challenges, traumas, and, and how they affect your ability to find yourself. Your nature is yourself. It is that core person that you know is capable of something important. If you find it easy to talk about something, you're probably working in alignment with your nature. If you find it hard and you find that you're having to look up words, you're having to plan what you said ahead of time because it didn't actually resonate with you, you're parroting somebody else, then that's a nurture and people aren't going to hear it as easily. Right. And then recognizing that your way is one of nine. The other person's way is not necessarily the same as yours, same as yours and yeah. probably not wrong. But just the way it nope, they're all needed. Comes about, it's all all needed. nine ways are needed, and all nine natural numbers, our natures, do need to be honored yeah. and and under integrated into the whole. The wisdom from others is wisdom. Bringing it into you helps you be whole. Spread their wisdom and become whole. Yeah. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. <laughs>